Martinez, and I want to welcome you to my kitchen. Today, we're making a delicious chunky guacamole. Then, we're going to make a sausage and onion coca, Spanish pizza. Finish up with buñuelos de queso, little cheese puffs. Daisy Cooks is brought to you by... As Daisy says, eat great, feel great, look great. Marshalls, brand names for less. And by All Clad Metal Crafters. All Clad is bonded construction. All Clad is innovative design. All Clad is professional equipment. All Clad is a state of mind. And by Brillo with Oxy Action. For tough messes, Oxy micro bubbles lift and dissolve grease and grime. Brillo, cleaning solutions for your home for over 90 years. Hola! My girls are coming over today. My friends, we're gonna have a little pate. Um, I'm making guacamole, I'm making sangria. We are totally gonna get our snack on and our drink on. We're gonna have a great time. Let's start with the guacamole. Guacamole waits for no man or woman. Before I start, I wanna tell you a little bit about avocados. I have two types of avocados here. I have the small Haas avocado, which is dark purpley, almost black in color. It has real rough skin. And when you press it with your thumb, it has a little give. And then I have the Florida avocado, which is larger by far than the Haas. It has smooth, shiny green skin and is much lighter in color. These are the avocados that I know from Puerto Rico. This makes a better guacamole. It's more buttery in texture, uh, creamier. This has a little more water in it. Still delicious. This is the avocado that we eat in the Caribbean. But today we'll be using the Haas. I'm going to chop an onion. And I like a fairly large dice because I like texture in my guacamole. When my sister had her first child, I had a baby shower for her and I made guacamole. This is like really, really funny because I had all of my family who were uh, Puerto Rican come to the house and they're looking at the guacamole and I hear one of my cousins say to my other cousin, what is that? It wasn't typical Puerto Rican party food. There was no pasteles, there was no pernil, there was no arroz con gandules. So I went over and I said, it's aguacate, you know, it's, uh, it's avocados. Come on, guys, you know, it's not like it's something that's so weird that you've never seen it before. It's guacamole. And they were like, oh my goodness. So they finally worked up their courage enough to go taste it and it was like, Oh my God, we can't get enough of this stuff. Okay, so here goes. A couple of cloves of garlic. Again, guacamole is really something that you have to play with. You have to fine tune it. Maybe somebody uh, likes more garlic or more onion. Jalapeno, because I like a little heat. And I've told you, but I'll tell you again, the way to control heat is seeds and ribs, right, in your peppers. Jalapeno is pretty mild, it's not terrible. I'm gonna save some of these seeds. I don't wanna get rid of all of them. And you know, when adding heat, you wanna be sensitive to your guests. Not everybody has the same tolerance for it, so I usually make it moderately spicy and then I'll set alongside a little more for anybody who wants to add to it. Okay, that's for the faint of heart. And then I'm going to chop some tomato. And again, I like nice chunky pieces. They are nice chunky pieces. Fabulous. And then my cilantro. And again, the nice tender stems, I just love them. They really add flavor. And you say to yourself, okay, so where's the avocado? Well, I usually leave the avocado for last because avocado has a tendency to discolor very quickly. I'm not taking any chances with my guacamole. And we're going to open the avocado. So we're just gonna hold the avocado in the palm of our hand and right around. Then you kind of like, just twist it, almost like opening a jar. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, and then tap the pit, and there you go. You have a gorgeous avocado. And I'm gonna go ahead and just score the bottom and scoop it out. Terrific. Okay, let's get to this. I want nice, chunky guacamole. I like when you pick it up for you to be able to taste and feel the different textures on your tongue. I just want to mix this well, and then I can start tweaking the season. We'll add salt and lime juice. 
Okay, and this is just about as mixed as I want it. And what I'm doing is I'm loosening up the juice fibers inside the lime. So if you kind of like roll it on your board, it breaks it up and makes it easier to juice your lime. And I want to get this lime in there sooner than later so that we prevent discoloration. And the lime really makes the guacamole sing. I just love it. Stir it in. Some pepper. Okay, we're close. Guacamole in the house. Fabulous. It's nice and sparkly. The lime has brought it up. The salt has brought the notes of all of the ingredients up to the front of your tongue. So what I'm going to do now, just give it an extra sprinkle of lime up on top, just over the top and then cover the whole thing with plastic wrap to keep the oxygen from making contact with the surface of the guacamole. And what you want to do is tuck it down so that there's no air hitting the guacamole. This way, you minimize the chances of it oxidizing. And then we're going to walk over to the fridge. Don't go nowhere. Now we're going to make some cocas. Cocas are the Spanish spin on pizza. And we're going to start out by making some dough. I've got some warm water here. The temperature should be between 110 and 115. And I'm going to add the yeast. This is rapid rise yeast. It takes off like really fast. I'm going to add a tablespoon of sugar. There we go. I'm just going to mix it. And we're going to let it sit for about 10 minutes to let it proof. And we'll be ready to continue. OK, so our yeast is ready. You can see it's all fluffy up on top, and it's homogenous. You see those little bubbles in there? That's what we want so that our dough rises. And I'm going to take this and pour it right into my mixing bowl. I want to make sure I get all that yeasty goodness in there. I'm going to add a pinch of salt, and I'm going to add a tablespoon of olive oil and a tablespoon of white wine vinegar and four cups of flour. And I'm going to use my paddle to mix it in. OK, the yeast and the water have taken up all the flour. So that's dried the dough up nicely. Let's just take this off into the pool with everybody else, and we're just going to put a hook on it. There we go. And this takes the place of kneading the dough by hand. It does it really, really quickly. OK, here we go. The reason that we do this is to loosen the glutens and the flour so that you, you have nice elastic dough. And give it a few minutes so that it works the entire ball of dough. Lovely, nice and elastic and smooth. I'm going to just powder my board here, my counter, pull my dough out. Come on, sweetie pie. There we go. We got this beautiful ball. Just flour my hands a little bit so I can handle it a little better. And dough is beautiful. It's elastic, it's soft. You don't want very, very, very dry dough because it'll be dry and flat. OK, so I have a pretty little ball of dough here. And I have a bowl that I've sprayed with oil. And in goes the dough. And then we flip it over so that the oiled side is on top to keep that skin from forming again. I'm going to cover it up with a little wrap. Or you can use a towel or anything like that. And since I'm using rapid rise yeast, It'll take, in this nice warm place, about 30, 45 minutes before it doubles in size. And then we can continue. I'm taking a peek at my dough, and it's risen absolutely beautifully. Doubled in size. And so I'm going to bring it over here and flour my counter. Isn't that pretty? So kind of punch it down and bring it down. Oh, this is just gorgeous. I, I have gorgeous dough. And I'm going to 
to start rolling my dough out. Make sure that the pin is floured. Okay, I'm rolling it into a vaguely rectangular shape because I want it to fit in my baking sheet. And I want a fairly large square because when the girls come to my house, they know they're gonna eat. So let me just lightly oil with a little olive oil the bottom of my pan and I'll spread it around with a paper towel. You can use vegetable oil or spray oil. I just love the perfume of olive oil. And then I'm going to sprinkle a little cornmeal to the bottom of the pan. The cornmeal will give it a little extra crunch and it'll help in keeping it from sticking to the pan. Kind of just shake it around a little bit. Okay, and now I'm going to bring my dough to the pan. And you're thinking, oh my goodness, this is gonna be a huge pizza. Well, it may be a little large, but I'm telling you, when the girls come over to my house for drinks and a snack, they like to get their snack on. Okay, so now we have just a little lip of extra dough, and I'm going to go ahead and just fold it over so I have a nice little crust. It's funny, in my house, when we make gorka or even when we have a regular pizza, all the kids eat their pizza and they save the crust for me. That's what I eat. I love it. That's my favorite part. You know, it's not a fancy crimp or anything. Just roll it over and pinch it. And then I'm just going to poke it so that the middle of the coca doesn't rise when I bake it. Kind of like the way that you do a pie crust. It'll rise a little bit, but not as much. This is usually Angela's job. Angela's my nine-year-old. And then I'm just gonna take this towel here and cover my coca. It's time to make the topping. And for today's topping for our coca, we're gonna use sausage. Now, in Spain, you'll find the coca topped with longaniza, which is um, a sweet sausage, or chorizo. <sighs> Bread and chorizo, please. But what I have here is some very acceptable sweet Italian sausage. And I have some water here. I'm gonna hit it with just a little whisper of oil. I'm gonna put my heat up on high. Now, I don't know if you start your sausages this way. I always like to poke them so they don't split open. I like to start my sausages in water because it helps them cook faster. Okay, so we'll keep an eye on those. I'm going to slice some onions for our coca. The toppings on a coca can be as varied as whatever you have in your refrigerator. You can make a meat coca, like I'm doing today. You can make an entirely vegetable coca. It's completely up to you. Looks like a lot of onions, but you know, onions melt. Once you cook onions, it's like they just dissolve. Okay. So we'll just set these here for a second. Let's take a look at these. The reason for the water being in the pan is that it will help the center of the sausage cook faster. If I were to put these sausages in a dry pan or in a pan with just oil, the outside of the sausage would brown and cook first and the inside would still be raw. When the water is gone, there's a little sheen of oil left in the pan and then the inside is cooked and I'm just going to gently then brown the outside of the sausage. So the water is all gone now, and I've lowered the heat, and I'm browning my sausage. And that'll take a few minutes, and our sausage will be ready. Look at the color on these. They're nice and firm. I'm just gonna take them out right here. Ah, oh, they're beautiful. Okay, and I have a nice hot pan with all that delicious sausage flavor right in there, look what I'm doing. These babies are going right in there. Just break them up a little bit. And you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to give these a little bit of water. I'm just gonna shoot over here to the sink. And it's the same concept as, as the sausages. Now I can give this high heat the onions are gonna wilt and start releasing their sugar. And by the time the water is gone, the onions will be cooked and just need a bit of color. And that's just gonna take a minute or so, just give them a chance. In the meantime, while those onions are getting happy, I'm gonna go ahead and slice my sausages. And I'm going to just cut them in little rounds. Look, beautiful, nice and cooked through. I'm being really good because I love sausage. 
I'm usually tasting it. Woohoo! Look at my onions. I got some serious onions going on here. See how pretty they get? You start them off with a little bit of water and then you have oil and look at how gorgeous. I'm just gonna go ahead and season these. I'm getting a little manic now because it smells like onions and sausage in my kitchen. And all I can think of is that it's going on bread. Because just the concept of that alone is making me very happy. A little salt and pepper. And we'll just give these another, ah. Uh. Okay, so here's the thing. I have to take them off the heat now. And I can't put these really hot onions on our coca just yet. So I'm going to go ahead and just set them here on this plate to cool for a few minutes. Ah, oh, come on guys, how gorgeous is that? It's really beautiful. And they taste like heaven. Mmm, delicious. Okay, so we'll set these aside for a second and then we'll put our coca together. Well, my sausages are cool, my onions are cool, and my dough looks fabulous. Let's make some coca. Okay, so I have nice puffy, it's risen a little bit. The center has stayed pretty flat. I would want to oil this, but since I have all the wonderful juices and the oil that the onions cooked in, I'm just going to kind of just spread that around and that's going to be fine. Just gonna pour the whole thing in and then just spread it around in the dough. This way I just get all of that beautiful olive oil and the oil from the sausages that we cooked in. Just spread it around, nice and even. Wonderful, and then I'm gonna go ahead and just nudge the, the little sausages right in there. There you go. Everybody's happy, including me. Mm. I can't tell you how many times I've been wanting to just like reach over and steal one of these pieces of sausage. And I was like, no, I'm gonna be really, really good. And I was, I surprised myself. It's not often that I do that. Little ends, oh boy. Ha, there's one piece of sausage left. Now I have no choice. Mm. It was worth the wait, fabulous. I'm just gonna take a little bit of olive oil here, right on my paper towel, and I'm just gonna run it around the edge just to give this dough a little, a little glow, a little, little gloss. There we go. You ready for coca? Let's take a walk over to the oven and pop this baby in. 350, I'm gonna start checking it about 20, 25 minutes and then we'll just keep a close eye on it until it's nice and golden and crisp and steamy and fabulous. Whew, I'm ready. I'm making buñuelos, little cheese fritters, with a special twist. Instead of frying it, which is the traditional way to make these Spanish little fritters, I'm gonna bake them, and we're gonna be left with a beautiful, airy, light little puff. So let's get this started. I have a cup of water with a stick of butter, and I brought it to the boil, and I'm going to add my flour all at once. And then I'm going to stir it really, really fast, get the flour worked in there, because I want the opportunity to um, really dry out this dough and get any little bits of flour that may be left in there. You see the dough comes right up. It doesn't get simpler than this. It's a cup of water, a stick of butter, and a cup of flour, and a teaspoon of salt. Okay, the dough, there's no like little specks of flour. It's nice, we're gonna take this off the heat now, and this is the fun part. We're gonna add eggs to it one at a time, one egg at a time. And we're working quickly here. Just break it up and work it into the dough. Okay? Egg number two. And once you get a feel for this, depending on the size of your eggs, it'll take three eggs, sometimes it'll take four eggs. Boy, am I glad I did that extra set of curls in the gym. This really gives your arms a workout. 
And you see it's really shiny, and in a second, it's just gonna finish taking that egg right up. Okay, you have this beautiful, elastic, very, very delicate dough. And we're gonna add our cheese. It's a cup of grated Gouda, and let's work that into our dough. Actually, the French have something very similar. They use Gruyere cheese and call these little buñuelos Gruyeres. And they're just absolutely delightful. Okay? Look at that. Nothing short of fabulous. I'm gonna get a spoon here, and we're gonna drop them right on my sheet that I have here with a little parchment. Okay? These are like incredibly easy to make. They're like drop cookies, right? And they're just gonna puff up and they're almost like hollow. They're just lovely. I get very excited about things like this. Okay, into the oven we go. So we have the buñuelos in the oven, a nice hot oven, 425 for about 15 minutes to really release the steam and make the buñuelos puff out. Um, become nice and dry and hollow on the inside. And then you lower it to about 375, and um, it's gonna take another 30 minutes. It'll be fabulous. Buñuelos. Gorgeous. I couldn't have prayed for a better little buñuelo. Look how beautiful they are, albeit very hot. So I'm just gonna set these here to cool for a second. And in the meantime, I have my beautiful chunky guacamole, and I've got some chips. Mmm, I'm getting the freshness of the onion, the sweetness of the tomato. There's a hint of heat there. I went easy on the girls this one time. And I have beautiful bright green color. The lime on top of it and the plastic over it work beautifully. Pardon me, guacamole. I've got some serious work to do here. This coca is a picture in itself. Oh, it's nice. Oh, it's crusty and gorgeous and beautiful. Wow. There we go. The crust is crispy on the bottom. It's still warm. Oh. <laughs> okay. They better get here soon, because I don't know how much is gonna be left. The onions are completely caramelized, the sausage is amazing, and the crust is delicious. Mmm. I lost my sausage. Wow. I'm making a pig of myself before the girls get here. And I think my buñuelos are ready. Don't these look absolutely gorgeous? And these are good for a couple of hours. I don't like to keep buñuelos from one day to the next because they kind of like get tired, you know? But they're so easy to make. You could put up a batch in no time, right? Look at how pretty. Better than cheese doodles. Mmm. Girls, Lonnie, Vi, Ro, Green, jump right in. The water is fine. We're having a party. Buen provecho. Daisy Cooks, Latin flavors that will rock your world, is the full color hardcover companion cookbook to this series. To order, call 800 336 1917. Daisy's top 10 basics and over 200 of her detailed recipes are included in this 320-page book. The price is $29.95. You can order your copy of Daisy Cooks by calling the toll-free number or order online at her website, daisycooks.com. Hola, it's Daisy. Hey, I'd love to hear from you. You can reach me at daisycooks.com. Tell me what you think. Sign up for my newsletter and get recipes and tips in English and Spanish. It's all at daisycooks.com. Daisy Cooks is brought to you by... As Daisy says, eat great, feel great, look great. Marshalls, brand names for less. And by... All Clad Metal Crafters. All Clad is bonded construction. All Clad is innovative design. All Clad is professional equipment. All Clad is a state of mind. And by Brillo with Oxy Action. For tough messes, 
Oxy Micro Bubbles lift and dissolve grease and grime. Brillo, cleaning solutions for your home for over 90 years.